Well, joining us from New York is Isabel Fonseca, author of Bury Me Standing, The Gypsies and Their Journey. She spent four years with gypsy communities across Europe. Jake Bowers is a Romani journalist, and Janice Atkinson is a member of UKIP. Welcome to you all. Let's start with you, Isabel Fonseca, in New York. I mean, you heard it in the film there, um, members of the community saying, we are no different to anyone else. We want to be treated in the same way. Are they no different to anyone else? Well, they are different in the sense that they, the uh, discrimination that they suffer and the levels of poverty in which they live are unlike other groups throughout Europe, and they are the largest minority in Europe. Um, I would correct one point in your, in your preamble, which is to say that... Um, I've lost my mic. Um, sorry. There you are. Um, You've got it. To say that they don't shun documentation. Uh, very often... Yeah, very often they are, cannot obtain documentation because it costs money. And um, it it's behooves many governments to keep them off the, re the rosters because that would entitle them to health care and education and housing and protection under the law. So, in a sense, um, it's expedient for governments to uh, have this population remain invisible, even though they are visible to the eye everywhere. Um, in that sense, they are different. They are excluded d by um, institutionally discriminationary policies. Jake Bowers, let me ask you, are they shunned by society or are they reluctant to become more integrated? Well, we are probably the only true Europeans that there are. You know, we live in every EU member state. We've been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. We are shunned by society, but we're also demonised by the media. Channel 4 has done a lot of that itself with his Big Fat Gypsy Weddings mockumentary. And as a result, there is enormous ignorance and misunderstanding about who we really are. So there's are. no reluctance to be countered, to, to be fully integrated in society, to pay tax taxes and all that. We want to be integrated. What we don't want is to be assimilated. We don't want to lose our culture and our identity in the process. Is anyone asking you to do that? P people have been forcing it for hundreds of years. In this country, Romani people were hung simply because of our identity in the Egyptians. Act. We're the mm. only ethnic community that has ever suffered that. Janice Atkinson, surely you don't like the idea of, of a minority living on the margins and the shadows of society. You would surely welcome them to be more assimilated. It makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. We have to actually assimilate the ones that are already here, like Jake's community, which do live on the margins. The trouble is, when we open our borders, because we've got no choice on this, estimate, it's estimated that there could be 50,000 a year coming from Bulgaria and Romania. Is that accurate? That's, 200, that's Migration Watch that have said that, and that is a very conservative estimate. And this report has already shown that's 200,000 here. We didn't already know that we're here. Well, Jake Bowers, the numbers are much bigger than originally estimated. Migration Watch is, 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 is a conservative think tank. I was in Romania last month making a film about a Romani football team that's, that's going to the World Cup in Brazil. Listen, the people that have got the get up and go have already got up and come. They're already here. The, most of the people want to be celebrated and, and they want to thrive in Romania and the countries that they come from. And if they're going to go anywhere, they're not going to come here. They'll go to Spain. Isabella, Isabel Fonseca, I mean, are they their own I'd worst like enemies when it comes about to... migration. Sorry, I was going to ask you, do you think they are sometimes their own worst enemies when it comes to integration? One more thing about migration, Matt, I would like to say is that um, very often people who come don't intend to stay. They would prefer to live and work in their own countries and they come to make money and leave. It's not a permanent asylum seeking and that's, that's something that shouldn't be feared, occasional visits for work. So how much, how much fluency is there, uh, Jake, uh, you know, in the population coming in, I mean, do people want to come to the UK and then stay here, or do they just roam around uh, to other parts of the European Union? I, th I think it's wrong to kind of create some kind of moral panic that the gypsies are coming mm. in their hordes, which of course is what the, the tabloid me media will do. Listen, we're European citizens. The EU is based upon the concept not just of capital but of freedom of movement of people. And so if we're part of the EU, we need to, we need to celebrate and accept that. The grinding poverty, which you haven't shown in your reports, and it never becomes a moral panic, is absolutely awful. The medieval conditions that people are living in in Romania and Bulgaria would shock most people. There's a European apartheid which is never reported by the media. Of course, some of them should come, but most of them would just do so to go home to increase the the level of prosperity in their communities. Do you accept that, Janice Atkinson, or are there certain things that are particular about the Roma community that, that your supporters are particularly worried about? 
No, not at all. We've got three million people unemployed in this country, one, of, one million of which are our youth. Now, these people are coming over, they will, their, their wages are four or five times less than, than ours. We've got a housing shortage of 200,000 houses a year. We also need another 250 school places, and that's just for the children that are already here. If we're going to be part of the EU, which I, I, David Cameron wants us to be, then we've got to make provision for them, because we have no choice, they're coming. But, because we want to come out of the EU, we're saying, let's, let's build the hospitals, the schools, and the houses that our own indigenous population needs. Then we can look outside. We want the brightest and best from around the world. I don't care what colour, race, or religion they are, but we've got to get our own people into but work But they should first. be treated the same as any other migrant coming to this country oh, when they're here. Absolutely. If they, ha they have the right to, to arrive here from the 1st of January. We can do nothing about that. Isabel Fonseca, I mean, the image that um, the Roma often have, not just in this country, but across Europe, is that they are deeply involved in crime, that they live in the shadows of society. Does the evidence bear that out? No, as we've seen with this case about uh, Maria, I mean, the glee with which this was seized on is proof of, of a kind of congenital criminality. And when it checked out her story that she was, however informally adopted, that just, it was a disappointment because it didn't tally with the, the gypsy of the imagination, which can be only one of two things, apparently, as a freewheeling open roader or lascivious carmen or a, a, a thief or a criminal. The word gypped comes from gypsy. It's very deep in our European imagination. Um, does it, I mean, much more striking in all the footage covering these stories is the shocking poverty in which they live mm. in the middle of Europe. I mean, like the worst favelas of Brazil. And rather than taking the couple of blonde children out of these communities, how about doing something about this endemic poverty and discrimination? These are European citizens. That's the takeaway we should be having and the discussion we need to have. Okay, we've got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Isabel Fonseca, uh, Jake Bowers, Janice Atkinson, thank you very much indeed.